Right now, you may have unhealed masculine energy, and that energy can be sabotaging your life and keeping you off your soul path. And here's a little secret. Being able to heal your inner masculine energy, both in men and women, is a crucial step in living your most fulfilling life in these new Aquarian energies on the planet. In this video, you'll learn what masculine energy is, the top four areas in which masculine energy is most wounded, then we're going to get into why it's so important to heal masculine energy, and then my top six tips on how to heal your inner masculine energy and create harmony between yin and yang energies. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. That intro that you just saw is for my live coaching tour. I'm going to be doing a coaching tour in person in New York on January 28th and 29th and in London on February 3rd and 4th. This in-person coaching tour is happening to celebrate the launch of our yearly premium coaching program, Heart Alchemy. And if you participate in any one of these live events, you're going to be getting a special discount for Heart Alchemy. These four Four events will be pretty intimate gatherings where we're going to have uh, live coaching, some on-the-spot healing, a live Q&A, but especially a lot of networking and just connection one-on-one. -on -one. I get to see you guys live connect with you and meet with you. So I'm super, super excited about that. If you want to come hang out with me in person in New York or London, there's going to be a link in the description box below so you can click on that link to buy your tickets. But don't think about it too long because these are very intimate gatherings gatherings, there's a very limited amount of tickets that we're able to sell. So these are going to sell out quickly. So if you're on the fence, consider joining me in New York or London. On to part one of the video, what's masculine energy? So before I define masculine energy, I want to leave a little side note. Okay. So side note, ding, ding. This is really important when talking about masculine or feminine energy. And the side note is that when I talk about masculine energy or feminine energy, we are not talking about genders. This is super important for us to understand. We all have an inner yang or masculine and an inner yin or feminine, okay? So it has nothing to do with gender. So when I say masculine energy, I'm not saying men. And when I say feminine energy, I'm not saying women, okay? Now, I'm going to have to use pronouns. So when I'm talking about the masculine, I'll say he. And if I talk about the feminine, I'll say she. But just remember from this side note that when I use these pronouns, I'm not meaning gender. Okay. I just have to use words to describe these energies and that's the best I can do. All right. So first side note here, we all have masculine energy, whether we're men or women. There are many traditions on the planet that talk about masculine and feminine energies. Uh, and one of them that's really famous is that black and white circle that comes, that comes to us from Taoism. So Taoism understands masculine and feminine energy as masculine being young, uh, feminine being yin. And so we've all seen that masculine feminine uh, circle with the black and white. The black part of the circle is the feminine and the white part of the circle is the masculine, okay? But uh, virtually all traditions around the world have talked about these energies in various ways. So the masculine energy, the nature of the masculine energy, I'm gonna give you some characteristics so you can start to feel this within you. Again, we all have masculine energy and we all have feminine energy. So the masculine energy is the part of us that is very action oriented. Okay. So the masculine is action oriented. The masculine is the doer. So the masculine goes out in the world and gets things done. The masculine energy is also the energy of structure. Okay. So the masculine energy gives structure to everything in life. So if you can think about uh, a house that has all of the structure and the pillars in the house and the roof, that's masculine energy. And then whatever happens inside of the house is feminine energy. So masculine energy naturally gives structure to feminine energy, which is feminine energy is a more um, kind of flowy energy without structure. So the masculine and the feminine are always working together. And this aspect of structure is where the masculine comes in and gives structure to the flow and the limitlessness of the feminine. 
Um, the masculine is also the energy of movement. So the masculine loves to be on the move. The masculine is also the energy of pure consciousness, or another way of saying this is observation. So the masculine, in some traditions, the masculine is considered, uh, the metaphor is the masculine is the blue sky. So that blue, if you can just think of that blue sky and all the weather patterns passing by, no matter what weather patterns pass by, whether it's a hurricane, a tornado, a white cloud, a dark cloud, a rainy cloud, a thunderstorm, whatever's happening be beyond those clouds or beyond the storm or beyond the hurricane, right above it is that blue sky that's always there and always constant. That's another way of, of looking at masculine energy, the pure your observation of consciousness. Okay. So these are some of the top characteristics. Another one, um, that's important for us to realize when we're working with masculine energy is it's represented by the right side of your body. Okay. So right side of the body, masculine energy. Some other characteristics that are interesting to talk about when we're, when we're uh, talking about the masculine is that this is the, the giver energy, okay? So feminine is a receptive energy, masculine is a giving energy. It's also a protector energy. This is a very common characteristic of masculine energy, that protector, provider type of energy, very quintessentially uh, part of the, of the young energy. Okay, so these are some of the top characteristics of what masculine energy, there are more characteristics, but I think these are probably the most, another one that just dropped on my head that's important, electric. Okay, so here's, here's another uh, characteristic. The masculine energy is very electric. So you can think about it like, um, like uh, lightning. <laughs> so the, the, the type of the nature of the energy of masculine is electric, whereas the nature of the feminine is magnetic. See, so a magnet brings to her what she needs. And then when, when it comes to the masculine, he goes out and he gets things done. That's a more electric, propelling outward kind of energy. Okay, so this is just to give you a little bit of an overview of what that masculine energy feels like in the world, how it behaves in the world, but also how it feels like within yourself. The last characteristic of masculine energy that I want to talk about is an important one because it's going to be important when it comes to healing, and that's the thinker aspect. Okay, so masculine energy tends to polarize up into the mind a lot. So the thinker aspect of us tends to be more of that masculine component, whereas the feeler aspect of us is more of a feminine component. Okay. Now this thinker component, this characteristic of masculine is going to be important for us a little bit later on in the video when I'm going to teach you how to heal this masculine energy. On to part two of the video where masculine energy is wounded. So we've been in masculine dominant energy for thousands of years on the planet, and that's created a lot of imbalances. Whenever one of these energies is completely imbalanced for a really long time, it creates a lot of chaos. And the dominance of masculine energy on the planet kind of divorced from the feminine energy. What ended up happening is we've had a lot of destruction, a lot of wars, a lot of conflict, a lot of things going on um, that have really kind of made the wounds really, really deep within the masculine energy. So a lot of times when we're talking about masculine energy, we can see the repercussions of the woundedness. So we can see the repercussions of the imbalances like war. Everybody can see the consequences of war. You know, people die, things explode. There's just all kinds of poverty. Every, a lot of things happen. So we can see what masculine dominance can create in the outer world when it's imbalanced. But what's rarely discussed is how those wounds then have a repercussion with, within the masculine energy itself. Because when, when that energy is imbalanced for so long and it creates so much destruction and chaos, there's a, there's, there are consequences to that energetically. And the consequences are that that mes masculine energy becomes so, so wounded and in such desperate need of healing. And that's where we're at right now. Whether we're men or women, we've inherited a masculine energy that's been so wounded across many hundreds of years at least, but probably thousands of years, this energy has been wounded 
masculine in desperate need of healing and harmonization with the feminine. And so that's the work that we're all doing right now. Now, there are many different aspects of a wounded masculine, but for the purposes of this video, I want to talk about the top four areas in which masculine energy is most wounded, because these are the four areas that are really probably have caused the most problems on the planet. And these are the four areas that we need to be very, very in tune with internally so that we can start to feel that energy within us to be able to heal it. The, the first area is, or the first wound, is called the warrior wound, all right? This is probably the most predominant wound in masculine energy, is the warrior wound. So millennia, thousands of years, if, you've, if you, you can just go on Netflix and watch a, a bazillion different movies, and usually there's violence included in the movies. There's a lot of violence in movies um, still today. And this is coming from the leftovers of this warrior wound. It's just lifetime after lifetime of violence, of just aggression, of just fighting. All of this creates a deep, deep woundedness in the masculine. The masculine, here's, here's a really, really important uh, side note here. Okay, so the side note, ding, ding. The side note is that masculine energy, when healthy, is not aggressive. Masculine energy is not aggressive when it's healed. Masculine energy is very confident, very powerful, but not aggressive. Whenever masculine energy veers into aggression, it's because it's already wounded and imbalanced and out of harmony with internal feminine, which is important to keep balance of the masculine. Okay, so this warrior wound, just lifetime after lifetime of killing, of wars, of violence, of 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 not just violence in terms of wars, but violence in terms of even within the masculine, the feminine energy. Okay, so so this warrior wound, very, very powerful, and it's a very difficult wound to heal, but we're working on that right now. The second wound is called the suppressor wound. Okay, so this is the wound that's caused by a masculine that's been so dominant and overpowering for thousands of years that he ended up suppressing the feminine, pushing the feminine down. And so what ends up happening with that is it, there's so much woundedness that's created, not only externally, because suppression of the feminine, we all know what that has led to. You know, It's been lifetimes after lifetimes of the feminine energy being dishonored, being disrespected, being suppressed. Um, being told that she's less than, having no power. So there's a lot of external uh, ways in which that suppression wound has manifested, but also internally, because the moment that I suppress one of my, uh, one of my energies, I'm going to create an internal imbalance in the energies. So when the masculine suppressed the feminine, he became completely divorced from that energy, completely separate from that energy. And these two energies, when they are not working together, there are always imbalances that can create a lot of destruction. And for the purposes of this wound, the suppressor wound has been very, very painful, especially for women who generally carry more feminine energy. It's been very, very painful because it's been generation after generation of the feminine energy being dishonored, not being trusted, being considered weak, being considered too emotional. We have different words to talk about this still in our vocabulary today, but still today, to this day, when I'm shooting this video, there is still a suppression of feminine energy occurring on the planet, and it's partially coming from that masculine energy that's too domineering, and he keeps pushing the feminine down, not honoring her. Okay, so this is the second wound. The third wound is called the thinker wound. <laughs> okay, now this may sound a little bit weird, like what's the thinker wound? The thinker wound is a wound that started to become reinforced as we continue to evolve, especially with the, the Enlightenment age. That's when we really took off into this thinker wound. And the thinker wound is when we became to, we started to give predominance to the mind. Okay, so remember the French philosopher Rene Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. This is a perfect, a perfect, perfect view into what that wound looks like in practice. It's a giving priority to thought over other aspects of us, okay? So giving priority over th thought over feeling. So if I think, therefore I am. So the identification is all with thought. 
this is also an imbalance because thought is more of a of a characteristic of masculine energy, but thought without emotion, thought without feeling, thought without body, being too polarized up in the mind is creates an imbalance and it can create havoc in our life. I mean, I, I've worked with thousands and thousands of people and when they come to me, and in, this happened to me in my own life, that their lives are completely destroyed and it's usually by a malfunctioning mind that thinks it knows what it's doing and then it completely takes the person off course, okay? So the mind is a wonderful, wonderful tool, but because it was completely divorced from the energy of the feeler, the feminine, it became more harsh. It became just logical. There are different types of thought and, and logic thought isn't the only one. And so it became very hard, rational, and logic. These are characteristics of masculine energy. And again, this became predominant. And this is even predominant today in spirituality and personal development circles. You will still find a lot of teachers talking about about mind over matter. Another way of saying this is mind over body. You see, there's still a disrespect for the intelligence of the body and a, an, an assumption that the mind is superior. And that's not the case. They need to work together and the body has a tremendous amount of intelligence, but it's not recognized even in, in spirituality and personal development circles. Wound number four is called the undeserving wound. Okay, so this one's interesting. I put this one here last because this is in, uh, not because it's an inferior wound to the other ones, but because this one usually occurs as a consequence of the other wounds. Okay, so this one sometimes takes a while to 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 actually uh, take effect, and it's occurring as a consequence of the other wounds. So what this wound is, this is when the masculine begins to feel undeserving, especially of the feminine. So the masculine starts to feel undeserving of love, undeserving of tenderness, undeserving of, of the feminine. And why? Because he starts to have consciousness of the violence, of the suppression, of the dominance, of, of all of the things that this energy has done when imbalanced, he starts to have an understanding of the consequences and of actually the destruction and the violence and all of the suppression that's occurred around the world. And he starts to have consciousness of this. And then he starts to fall back into an energy of not feeling deserving of the feminine, of not feeling deserving of love, because in his belief, he's caused so much damage that now he doesn't feel deserving of any good things in life, okay? This is a wound that we all have, because again, we all carry partial uh, masculine templates within us, whether we're men or women. And this is a wound that sometimes it goes undetected for a long time because we know about the other wounds, the warrior wounds, the violence wounds, you know, the, the, the machismo wounds, all of these, all of these kinds of wounds, this is easy for us to see. But when it comes to that deep feeling of feeling undeserving of love, that's harder to get to. It's harder to get to because the masculine energy hides it a little bit more, but it's there nonetheless. At one point or another, this masculine started to feel undeserving of love and of tenderness and of the feminine because of all of the bad things or all of the, um, the painful things that he had done out in the world. Now, although this energy, this fourth wound is harder sometimes to get to, it's absolutely crucial to get to in order to get through the whole healing of the masculine. And I remember this was a very painful part of my own healing of the inner masculine because I'm a woman, but I actually have masculine dominant energy naturally in me. And when I started to do this healing of the masculine, when I, when I reached this deep, deep core wound of feeling undeserving, I started to work with my inner feminine and I would ask her to rise and help heal the masculine. And as she was rising to meet the masculine, I could feel internally that he, 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 it's almost like the energy couldn't even face that masculine energy couldn't face the feminine because he felt ashamed of, of all that he had caused to, all the pain that he had caused to this feminine energy. And I could feel that playing out inside of my body when I was doing this, this energy work. I can feel it. I would sit in trance meditation and I could feel that as that feminine would rise and, and try to help heal the masculine, the masculine was almost like, like, you know, I don't want you to help heal me. Like, how can I ask you to help heal me when I've caused you so much damage? And it was a really interesting play on energy. And it took me a while for this masculine to be able to accept love and, and healing from my inner feminine. 
But this is just an example of sometimes how this wound is so buried that it, it takes a little bit of time to get there. On to part three of the video, why the masculine must heal. Okay, so there are really two main uh, levels that the masculine must heal and why it must heal on a personal level and on a collective level. Okay, so on a personal level, the masculine energy really needs to heal because that masculine energy is so templated naturally to be the energy of action, to be the energy of movement, but because it went into imbalance from suppression of the feminine, it went into imbalance, we created cultures, the cultures of hustle, the cultures of doing incessantly, the cultures of just do, 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 work, 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 don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. And so we created these cultures and that was the normal for us for a really, really long time. But what ends up happening is when this masculine energy is imbalanced, we're going to burn out, we're going to get into depression, we're not going to be happy because we can't be happy if we're always on the go, if we're always hustling, if we're always feeling this pressure to succeed, to be successful, that creates an enormous energy deficit and we actually don't end up enjoying life because we don't stop, we don't relax. And it's really, really important for this masculine energy now to be healed so that it could bring more balance into our life so that we can understand that we can co-create our dreams, that we could create wonderful things on the planet, but we don't have to hustle. The hustle culture of constant action and no relaxation has gotten us into a lot of trouble, has gotten us sick, has gotten us depressed, has gotten us suicidal. And it just, this imbalance needs to slow down. It needs to stop. It needs to come more into harmony. So on a personal level, it's so important for the masculine to heal. Otherwise, we're going to just keep burning out and we're going to keep uh, living lives that are just, you know, overly uh, focused on actions on the outside, on the material world, and not focused enough on, on the inner states of happiness and joy, which are so important for us to be truly happy. But there's another important aspect on a personal level, why it's so important to heal this masculine energy. And that's that when I'm in hustle, when I'm in constant action, when I never stop, it's really hard for me to hear my inner voice, that voice of the intuition. That's the voice of the feminine. You see, this is why masculine and feminine harmonization is so important. It's because the masculine, although he is the energy of action, he needs direction from the feminine. The feminine is the feeler the feminine is the compass. And so if the masculine is constantly going out and doing, 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 doing without listening to the feminine component, the, the component of the inner voice, he's just going to be doing and acting and acting without any direction. And that's a total waste of energy. And so when we balance this beautiful masculine, when he relaxes more, when we go into places of non-action, of contemplation, of inner meditation, we start to connect with our inner voice. And then suddenly the inner voice tells us where it wants us to go. And then the masculine acts to get us there. And it's this beautiful harmonization between inner voice and intuition and the action of the masculine that can really create fulfilling lives. Then the second level, it's really important to heal the masculine is on a collective level. All right. So collectively what's happening right now is the planet herself. So you, you have to remember to think about the planet as a sentient being. So the planet herself has beautiful, beautiful consciousness. She's evolving on her own like all of us are. And so she comes to points where she also has major changes in energy, sometimes really quickly. And we're going through one of those major changes right now where the energy on the planet has literally shifted from one side to another, a whole total 180. And it's gone from masculine dominance to feminine dominance in a very short amount of time. And this is by natural design. So this is part of, of the planet's uh, evolution in her own consciousness. And so this is a way also of kind of balancing things out. So it's kind of like a pendulum. When you think about a pendulum, it swings one way, but it's 100% certain that it's going to come back and it's going to swing in equal proportion to the other end. And that's the normal way of kind of evolution and how to balance things out. And so right now, the pendulum has swung toward the feminine, and we're going to be in collective energy that's feminine dominant for the rest of our lives, at least, because that's what's necessary in order to bring more harmonization into the planet and more balance into the planet. 
And so that means that for all of us, we are now sitting, standing on a collective grid or a collective consciousness that's feminine energy dominant, which means that we have to know how to work with that feminine energy dominance, right? So the things that we used to do when there was a masculine dominant energy grid, the things we used to do will not work in the new energy. We're going to burn out. We're going to, some of us may even die younger because we may completely burn out that our bodies get sick. And it's because we can't use the same rules that we were using before in this current energy. So right now the planet is, and will continue for the rest of our lives to be feminine dominant. So we have to heal that inner masculine. So he knows how to um, act in a world and in an energy that has a feminine tone to it, a feminine dominance to it. So this is another level and another reason why it's so important for us to heal the masculine right now. And this brings us to a really interesting nugget. Okay, so here's a million dollar nugget for you. You may be thinking, you know, if the energy is feminine dominant right now, why don't I just work with the feminine energy and just forget the masculine altogether? Well, that's a good question, actually. But the problem here is that if the masculine energy is not addressed, he will not let you get to feminine energy. <laughs> it's very difficult. So imagine this. My, my inner masculine is my protector, my warrior, the one that stands guard. Okay. If I don't work with that energy, he's going to be standing guard and he won't let me get past him to work with the feminine. So when we have an overly dominant masculine energy, it's very difficult for us to work with the feminine because he won't allow it. And that's why part of the healing is going to be to ask that masculine to stand down, put the sword down, relax, go onto the porch, sit down, have a beer, <laughs> just relax. That's really what we want that masculine energy to learn to do, to relax, to soften a little bit. And as the masculine energy stands down, then the feminine can come up and then yes, we can learn how to work with that feminine energy a lot better. But this, this crucial first step, this little nugget is that that masculine energy must stand down and relax before we're able to fully work with the feminine. On to part four of the video, how to heal the masculine. So I'm going to be sharing my top six tips on how to work with this masculine energy to heal it. But I want to leave you with an operating word here. Okay. So the operating word is harmonization. That's what healing means. It means harmonization. At the end of the day, I don't like to use the word balance a lot. Even I do use it sometimes, but I don't like to use it too much because I don't want to give the impression that balance means means you're going to have an internal 50% masculine and 50% feminine, and that makes you 100%, okay? For a lot of us, that's not the case. So as I just explained a little while ago, I'm a woman, but I have masculine, naturally masculine dominant energy is, is that's my soul signature is more masculine dominant. So no matter how much work I do on the masculine or no matter how much healing I do on my masculine, it's never going to get to a 50, 50% because that's not the nature of my soul. My soul is more masculine dominant naturally. So I like harmonization as a word a lot better because what that shows is that they are are both working together, feminine and masculine are working together, even if within your nature, you're like 60% masculine and 40% feminine or 70% feminine and 30% masculine. You see, whatever your internal uh, balance of energies, whatever your internal uh, ingredients and the percentages that you have of each of these energies, that's not what needs, it doesn't need to be equalized, but it does need to be harmonized. So always remember the word harmonize, harmonization when it comes to healing any of these uh, two energies. Tip number one is gentle self-talk. So uh, the masculine needs so much gentleness. You know, this is an energy that's been so wounded by aggression and violence and domineering behavior that it, it's the, the masculine has become hardened by the, by these things. And so the masculine needs a lot of gentleness. So it, masculine energy responds really, really well to self-talk because it's an energy that polarizes more in the mind. So reach the masculine where he's more natural. So when it comes to self-talk, it works really, really well, but it has to be a, a gentle self-talk, no violence, no aggression, because you're not going to be able to take the aggression out of the masculine energy if you're adding aggression, okay? 
So gentle self-talk. I like I used the, a lot of mirror work when I was doing this, and I would just repeat mantras in front of the mirror, addressing my own inner masculine. So I would say things like, I'm safe, you can relax, it's time to stand down. There's a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different mantras that you could say to that masculine in a gentle, loving way to just kind of get him to relax and get him to calm down, get him to stand down, all right? So the self-talk is really, really important. But you can say other things, you know, you can actually have internal conversations with your masculine, you know, when you feel your masculine starting to maybe judge the feminine this happens a lot if you see the masculine trying to suppress if you see if you feel your masculine becoming violent or aggressive or always wanting to be in the do do hustle hustle mode you can talk to him you can say you know i need to rest a little bit we can relax a little bit more we can manifest life with more ease i love that i love that to to talk to him and to show him that you can you can live life with more ease and things still happen Okay, so uh, regardless of what you say to that inner masculine, just make sure that the self-talk is gentle, it's loving, and it induces relaxation in this masculine energy. Tip number two is breath work. Breath work works so well in helping the masculine stand down. And part of the reason why it works so well is because breath work, especially this is the type of breath work you're going to use because there are different techniques, but we're talking about slow, deep breaths. Those are the type, that's the type of breath work you want to, you want to use when working with the masculine, because you want a relaxation. You want to elicit a relaxation of the masculine. So you don't want to have like a fiery breath, really fast inhale and outhale and inhale and, and exhale and inhale and exhale. If you do that really fast, it starts to create even more energy. It riles up the masculine even more. So you want to have slow, deep breaths, slow, deep breaths. This is going to start relaxing the masculine more and more. And, and those, those breaths that it's going to elicit not just relaxation of the masculine, but also bring him uh, an, a state of peace, a state of just calmness that's really, really important, especially because this energy is so wounded into aggression that he's always on edge um, because of that wounding. And so the deep, slow breaths calm the energy out, but also bring you more into that feminine body oriented energy. And as soon as that happens, the feminine starts to rise and the masculine allows that energy to, to kind of come up. Okay. So breath work works really well. You see, that was just an example of one breath. Nice inhale, long exhales, long exhales. Bonus points, if you can take a nice big inhale and then as you exhale, you pause at the bottom of the breath <laughs> and you pause for as long as you can. Okay, so make it very slow, make it very deep. This is already going to start eliciting relaxation in that masculine energy. Speaking of relaxation, tip number three is body relaxation. Okay, so this one is really, really important because again, that masculine energy is very, one of the primary wounds of the masculine energy is aggression and violence, so much of it just piled up over generation after generation. So he's really on edge. A masculine energy that's on edge, the way that we can talk about that from a physical level is that your sympathetic nervous system is overly active. That's the sign that the masculine is in too much violence and on edge and the wounding is very, very acute is when that when you can feel the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is a part of your nervous system that's responsible for the fight or flight response. So that's the part of the nervous system that's active when you're in places of stress, when you need to run away from danger, okay? When the masculine is overly wounded, he's going to cause an overactivation of the sympathetic nervous system, and so you're going to be on edge. When the sympathetic nervous system is overly active, your body's going to be tight, your heart rate's going to be going fast, you're going to be nervous, you're going to be anxious all the time, you're going to be jittery. 
And it's because the sympathetic nervous system is overly active. And you can see why, right? Like this is a masculine energy that's gone to war so many times. So he's had to be on edge for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And so now the body relaxation is important. And you can use multiple different ways to relax the body from massage to all kinds of different ways that you could use to just deeply relax your body. But there's one of them that I want to leave you here with that works really, really well for masculine energy. And it's the, the practice of gentle touch, okay? Gentle touch works so, so well. It's so effective. So literally what you can do is you just you can just put some massage oil on your hands and you can just slow, just very gentle, okay? So just a very, it's not an actual massage. It's just very gentle touch. You can actually do it without oil. If you don't want to feel the stickiness on your skin, you can do it without oil. You can just take your clothes off and you can gently, gently stroke your skin. Maybe start on the right side of your body because that represents anatomically your masculine energy. Just gentle stroking, gentle touch of your face, gentle touch of your, your chest, your arms. Just gently stroke your body. This gentle uh, touch immediately relaxes the body and brings the masculine energy out of that out of that constantly on edge, that gentle touch will relax him, will calm him down. He will feel safe. He'll feel like he could let his guard down. So this is a really effective practice that you can use for body relaxation. Tip number four is quieting the mind. <laughs> so remember that that masculine energy polarizes a lot in the thinker, into thought. And so this uh, tip here is a great way for you to relax that thinker energy. If your mind is thinking, thinking, excessive, excessively thinking, it's that masculine energy that's, that's a little bit of out of harmony. And so there are multiple ways. I don't even have to tell you how to quiet your mind these days. I'm going to give you some, some indication. The top one is meditation. You knew I was going to say that, right? Like the top practice to quiet the mind is meditation, but it doesn't have to be just meditation or it could be different forms of meditation. You could put some hiking shoes on and go in nature, connect with nature, connect with trees, or you can sit down and just close your eyes and bring your awareness down into your body, out of your mind and into your body. You can use all kinds of different techniques. You can put some headphones on and you can listen to some binaural beats or some meditation music. There are multiple ways in which you can decrease thought. For some people, they decrease their thought when they're involved in something creative. So when they take a painting class or they're painting or when they when they do pottery or uh, some some kind of creative endeavor immediately quiets um, quiets their mind. Okay, so there are different practices that help you quiet your mind. The more that you that you bring these practices into your life, the more you're going to be balancing this excessive thought uh, characteristic that's part of this masculine energy. Tip five is forgiveness. So th the practice that I that I use um, for this for this tip is called Ho'oponopono. It's a traditional Hawaiian practice. Uh, it's called Ho'oponopono and it's basically a prayer. There's four parts of the prayer and you just repeat them over and over and over as many times as you want. Like sometimes I will do an entire session of Ho'oponopono with my mala beads that have traditionally 108 beads on them and I will just repeat repeat this prayer over and over 108 times in my morning meditation or in my nightly meditation. Okay. Now, why is forgiveness important? It's because of that aspect of the masculine, that wound of not feeling deserving, feeling undeserving of love. And so it's what this whole ponopono, what this forgiveness does is it, it washes over that masculine and, and it helps him let go of this idea that he doesn't deserve love. So it's a beautiful, gentle practice. And here are the four parts um, so that you, you can repeat them in any order, but here are the four parts as I usually repeat them. So it's, uh, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I say these four parts, um, not, not in a hurry, paused with a lot of feeling, and I just repeat them. Again, I repeat them 108 times because I have my mala beads with me. You can repeat them as many times as you want. This actually becomes a trance meditation as you're repeating it. 
this beautiful practice of forgiveness immediately washes out any kind of wounding that the masculine has um, pertaining to not feeling deserving of love. Tip number six is activation meditation. So activation meditations work really well with different aspects, but in this particular case, they work really well to harmonize, to heal that masculine energy, okay? Activation meditations are meditations that have been imbued with specific light codes so that when you just listen to them and you follow along, you're able to go through that energy cleanse um, within the meditation. So I have an activation meditation just for you. So I created an activation meditation for masculine energy. You can find that in the free resources page on my website. It's a free download. I'm going to leave links in the description box below so you can download and work with this masculine energy activation after watching this video. Once you work through the masculine energy and all the information you found in this video, also make sure to check out the feminine energy video that I shot a while back. That's a really popular video and that goes into the yin energy, into the feminine energy. It'll be great for you to watch that video after this one so that you get a complete picture of yin and yang energies and how to harmonize both of them together. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below so you can watch that video after this one. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. Do you feel like your masculine energy is wounded? I want to hear all about it in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can download my popular free guided meditations. And don't forget this feminine energy video that I talked about. This will be great for you to continue watching. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.